Dragon Surf Sport podcast? Yeah, I guess it's still called that. Haven't done one for a long time. Haven't, eh? Nah. Well, you know what they the say about things that take time? What? I, don't, I was asking you the question. Oh, I, I don't know what they say. It's something about cheese. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that exactly, but... um. Time and cheese. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good to have you on this podcast again. Thanks for having me, Luke. Yeah, yeah. you're pretty much the only person I ever have on this <laughs> podcast. Just every few months and yeah. get back into it. Well, the thing is I try and get um, pro surfers on this podcast. Yeah. But the unfortunate thing with living in New Zealand and really only spending any time in Raglan is that there there aren't any. You're yeah. the only one. Yeah. So that's where it's it's a bit limited. It's either talk to you or... Well, just you, really. Okay. Well, yeah. it's a privilege to be here, bro. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah, it's good to good to have you is. here. Yeah. Uh, you've had a pretty full on last twenty nine years, but specifically the last probably month or so, month or so has been pretty full on for you. You went fucking everywhere. Yeah. And you did a whole bunch of surfing. Mm -hmm. Can you just like maybe uh, elaborate on the surfing that you've been doing, what you've been doing, and just condense it down into maybe three and a half minutes? Okay, well, yeah. I've just been on a seven-week trip away competing. I uh, started in Virginia Beach at a three QS 3000 and then um, went over to Spain, Pantin, for a 10,000. Virgin Virginia Beach, so that is in the States, just for those people who have yes. no idea Sorry. where it is. Like Most people probably yeah, don't East know. America, like below New York. Below New York? Yeah, like a f maybe like a two-hour flight, but not The below. old Big Apple, eh? Yeah. Yeah, it was close to the wave pool, actually. I was thinking about going to that Texas wave pool. Oh, the Texas yeah. one. I'd have but been I fucking think... gutted if you went there without me. Yeah. Crowey's going there soon. Is he? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you yeah. said that the other day. But, um, yeah, I went there first, which is a different place in itself. Uh, a lot of different people around. Uh, it's pretty dangerous, but... At the same time, I didn't really like see anything that seemed to be dangerous. So, what, 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 what do you mean by dangerous? Are, are we know, talking like, like it's easy like to catch diseases there? No, no, like shootings and and uh, stuff like that. Oh, I guess okay. That's just all America, though. It's man dangerous. on man, or woman on woman, or person on person. I should say person on person crime. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, and usually the waves aren't very good there, and it wasn't that good there the whole week, so. Yeah, that was. I, I actually got a good result there, though. I got yeah, I there. saw that quarterfinals. Yeah. So yeah. that's another fifth couple of points. Yeah, so I've had three fifths this year, which is good. Um, so that was fun. Had ten days there, and then I went to Pantin, um, back to where I've won my first QS event, which is awesome to be back there. I mean, it was the first ten thousand that I got back into because I obviously before uh, the first half of the year I couldn't get into any of those events. So I was pretty stoked to be back there. And that's because, what is it, July 1st, there's a cutoff where you you have to be in the top 100. Yeah. So if you're not in the top 100 at the first half of the year, then you can't get into the 10,000s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they reseed it after the, you know, after that first half. So after Huntington Beach, they reseed the whole qualifying series. And uh, yeah, I did well in the first half of the year, so managed to jump into that top 100 and yeah, get well, in the 10,000s. Well, that's the thing with you, like, you didn't really have that many opportunities to get a really high ranking at the start of the year because you could only get into what maximum of a six thousand. Yeah, well, I had to get the do the trials in the six thousands at the start of the year, um, which I won the trials in Newcastle, and then I had to get a wild card into the manly event. So that was pretty much all I can do. And then I, instead of going to the J Japanese six thousand, I went to Krui three thousand. Yeah, which is. So the was it the manly one? Was that a ten thousand or a six thousand? <clears throat> six thousand. Oh, so that was a six thousand. Mm. But so you were still groveling to yeah. get into those six yeah. thousands at the start yeah. of the year. Yeah. So I did. Like obviously, I won the trials in Newcastle, and then they, I was pretty much hounding them for a wild card to get into manly because it was like a good opportunity. And yeah, they managed to give it to me, which is awesome. And I didn't, I didn't pounce on any points there, but just to get the opportunity to compete in those contests was good. So. Um, yeah, that kind of just started my role, I guess, at the start of the year. Yeah, and I mean, I was hoping, you were probably also hoping that your success in some of those lower ranked 3000s would translate into the to the higher rated events, but I mean, that's the thing with surfing, sometimes shit just doesn't go your yeah. way, but I mean, I saw that you were on a roll and you were surfing so good and you were confident because you had had these results mm -hmm. and you knew that you could beat 
pretty much anyone. Yeah. But um, I think maybe, yeah, if you had had those opportunities at the start of the year and being mm. able to get into those bigger ones, then, you know, shit could have snowballed a bit, bit yeah, more. Yeah, 100%. Like, I think grinding out those smaller ones at the start of the year was... Fuck, wait, wait. When you said 100%, then that just sounded like the full cliche... 100%. Surfy <laughs> fucking response, yeah, eh? Well, yeah. No, nah, but 100%, that's yeah, true, know, though. Yeah, yeah 100%. 100. Yeah. Nah, 100%. <laughs> nah, but it's good. It's good that you're kind of getting, like, because I, I need to bring this up. This is this is your first uh, kind of uh, media y thing. Yep. I, I mean, Raglan Surfport's kind of big time, I guess, when you think about it. Yeah, um, for sure. But this is your yeah. first media experience after qualifying for the Olympics. Yeah. So. Um, just just warming Billy up into uh, the whole talking thing, yeah, yeah. talking in front of people, talking on a microphone, blah blah blah. So um, yeah, just get get all those like cliches and shit, okay. get all those okay. sorted, all right. so that when you go into your your real like interviews and stuff yeah. like that, you know exactly what you've got your formula. Okay. So I needed to stay off the hundred percent. No no no, you got to use the hundies. <laughs> I'm just bringing it up because like this is you know just somewhat cliche, informal, sir, but sir, yeah sir. but yeah no, I'm just like yeah fucking yeah you got it like you you. Tick all those boxes, one hundred percent. Yeah. No, what's that? What's the other one? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Nah, but th- that's the thing is like because there's only really you, Rick, and Kehu who are doing like international shit, mm. and you're doing post seat interviews, and you guys are the only ones who are going to be saying yeah, nah, yeah, yeah nah. nah, like Ke- yeah, no, Ke- yeah. Well, well, I saw Kehu's one, funny, and man. yeah, he did fucking several year nahs. <laughs> <laughs> he did a lot of year nahs. He's so but, good to travel with. Yeah. But I guess you gotta you gotta tick off all those cliches. Mm-hmm. Is there like a formula? Like when you sign up to go on the WSL, do they give you like guidelines for post heat interviews? Saying these are the boxes you gotta tick. You gotta say, um, yeah, fully stoked to make it through <laughs> that one. Um, uh, fuck, what was it? No, there's, there's some other there's ones. There's some doozies out there. Everyone just like I guess everyone has their like same thing they say every interview. Yeah, Because yeah, it just yeah. comes off the top of your head. Yeah, like, you just I'm get it down sure there. I say like a similar thing every time. You, you do the same one every time. Yeah, you say, oh, easy. fully stoked. Boards are going really well. Got a few out there. Looking forward to the next round. Yeah, like basically and then that. Maybe a few thanks every now and then. Yeah, you always like thanks, my missus. Thanks, my dog. <laughs> Like, that's your yeah. thing, and you've got that down. But yeah. I guess, yeah, everyone has their whole structured post-heat interview Yeah, thing. I don't know. I, I guess I'm a little, I'm quite shy in front of the camera and um, talking and stuff like that. So I guess I just go to my what I know is best and easiest. Yeah, go, go, go just your standard, <laughs> yeah, just like, just yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, no. Yeah, no. Heat, uh, you know. a few ways. I'm stoked to make it through, and yeah, thanks for all the support at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's basically it. Up. But you kind of draw it out a little yeah. bit because they'll ask you uh, questions and shit about your heat. heat. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that's cool, man. And uh, how how's it been traveling with uh, with Kehu? And uh, well, who have you been traveling with? Um, <clears throat> I was traveling kind of by myself in um, Virginia Beach, and then uh, Spain. I was traveling with Wilco. We spent the w- spent the week with him. Was that X W? Oh yeah, Matt Wilkinson, X W C T surfer. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, and then um, obviously we went to. Japan, so it was me, Ricardo, and Kehu all in the same room and yep. hung out for the week with. How is um, because when sorry when when you're in close proximity to to guys like that and you're all sharing the same room, yeah. is there someone who who farts more than someone else, <laughs> I don't, or is it even? I don't know. I guess it's probably pretty even. Yeah. I, I guess it's how comfortable you feel around the bros. Yeah. True. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, because when you're in close proximity with someone like that. It's not good for your internal organs to be holding oh. flatulence in. Yeah, well, apparently, like, if you don't fart in that, it's, like, really bad for your body, eh? Yeah, it is yeah. real bad. Have so, you heard of spontaneous self-combustion? <laughs> You've heard of it, eh? Yeah. yeah, well, it's, like, a myth. Like, I'm not even sure if it's real, but if it is real, it's definitely people who explode are people that hold in farts. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. So That's pretty out of it. But, yeah, there wasn't, there's definitely no holding in. No holding in? Nah. Okay, well, that's yeah. good. But yeah, no, that Japanese comp was awesome. So I went to Spain for the 10,000, did really um, bad there. The waves were really crap and um, I don't know, I felt pretty good and I still like I still feel good, but um, it was kind of a, almost like a good thing for me that I lost because I got to go to Japan earlier because my original flights were meant to get into Japan like the day, I was, the day before I was meant to compete. So um, I lost in... Um, Spain and then I booked me and Ricardo booked the same flight to Japan so we got there the day before the um, opening ceremony 
Um, so we got the night, you know, to sleep and, and recover and get up the next day and do the whole ceremony with the whole team. So that was kind of a blessing in disguise, kind of. So, um, yeah, we got there a few days earlier than expected and um, got to support the girls for a few days. And, um, and and there was a moment there that I took a little bit of offence to. Well, like on your side. Oh, uh, here we go. Because there was this video that came <laughs> up on the internet that someone had put on there. Well, actually, a few people had put it on yeah. their Instagram. And it was of you sleeping on the beach. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there was like a little crew of yeah. your fellow teammates mm-hmm. who should be 100% supportive of each other yeah. at all times. Yeah. And and they were just standing around videoing you. And they thought it was hilarious. Yeah. But, I mean, I just instantly thought that's pretty fucked up. Like, you need to show some solidarity. Yeah. And you need to stick together as a team. And you should have all been having a group nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess jet lag called up to me and the opening ceremony and the whole day at the beach like the girls were competing all day pretty much for three days um so that we had the opening ceremony the first day and we were just at the beach doing uh everything and then the next day the girls went straight into competition and then we just i guess everything just caught up to me and i fully passed out on the on the beach (laughs) um i never really do that which is pretty crazy i just let my head back a little bit and i was just out i kind of had a feeling it was going to happen and yeah, woke up to the the, the boys kind of. Yeah, and that sucks because it did look like you were actually having a really good oh, sleep because yeah, you woke up, you're like totally confused, yeah. and I mean you'd been travelling, you know, yeah. for hours from bloody Europe, yeah. and then you get there and you have a sleep on the beach, and then these guys wake you up and you're like, oh fuck, where am yeah. I? And you look super confused, I, I fully and I, that's why I felt for you, man. I was just <laughs> like, fucking leave this dude alone. He's just having a little moy on the beach, like shit. Yeah, I fully. I woke up and I was like, whoa, that was. Because you know how sometimes those little naps you're just in the deepest sleep. Yeah, bro. And, and especially like, like, just like, whoa, what the, what's going yeah. on here? It's always weird too when you wake up and there's like people filming you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that was quite embarrassing. But the next few days, the team started to slowly do the same thing. So, Oh, I've they were having little secret, naps, eh? Yeah, I've got You've some got some. Videos. Oh, I've got <laughs> yeah. some ammunition. Yeah, I do actually. A few of the girls started passing out on the beach and uh, yeah, so... No, that was an awesome trip. Japan was so fun. I mean, um, it's always good. I love I love going to those those world's events with the team and representing New Zealand. Obviously, we represent um, New Zealand everywhere we go, but just coming together, all six of us and, and Dean and Janine were there as well. So the whole team vibe was really good and um, even everyone around the contest is just enjoying it. Like I think Kelly Slater was saying how much he liked that event like, compared to the uh, WSL events. Yeah, yeah it's... it's um. Like, because I, I went to a couple back when I could do a frontside air reverse properly. Yeah. And I <laughs> went can, to... Bro. Yeah, I can. I'm actually really fucking good. <laughs> and I should have been selected for that team. But then, well, you know, whatever. You should, have you ever tried the airborne comp? No. Nah. Oh, you should try... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can't. My knees are fucked now. Mm. And the rest of my body. But I remember going to those events. And they were awesome. Like, you'd, you have the team camaraderie. Like, sure, I didn't have people videoing me on the beach sleeping or anything like that. But... um. Yeah, I don't know. There was it was just a lot of fun. Like the team really rallied around mm. each other, and and you know we'd support each other in, in our um, decision to purchase whatever kind of Pinot Noir it was. Um, and then you know we always had each other's backs if there was a fight at the bar we we're in, you know. And mm. it was um it was just really like I mean we did shit in the contest. Yeah. But that's probably because we were drinking every <laughs> night. But I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely different than just a you know I've yeah. never been to a QS event, but. You know, just having that kind of team camaraderie. Yeah, I guess every QS event you're kind of just doing it for yourself. I mean, we all have our own personal goals at the at the Worlds, but you're all, you know, travelling as a team and you're all there to... Obviously, there's a team points ratings at the end of the whole event and you get medals and stuff for the team. So we're all kind of backing each other and um, always supporting each other. So um, yeah, Unless no, you're in the same heat, then, then you kind of... Yeah, then you kind yeah, of... Yeah, well, that's look different, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Um, Luckily, that didn't really happen. So, no, it was a it was an amazing week, and I, yeah, after everything, um, after that one day, I surfed like f- five or six heats, I think, um, and then I, I found out that I'd qualified for the Olympics, and um, yeah, that 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 day was just crazy. I think I was pretty drained after that. There was a lot of emotions going on, and I had to kind of just almost block it all out because I had I was still in the contest, you know. Yeah, so, to keep surfing. Yeah, I had to keep surfing, so I had to. Like almost just go to my room and do the same thing I'd been doing all week and 
um, I managed to make a few more heats and, and get eighth overall and um, and then pretty much as soon as that finished I had to pretty much get on another plane and get straight out of there to another contest so yeah. I haven't really like sat down like this is my first time pretty much sitting down talking about it um, uh, yeah so what, been, what, what did it feel pretty, pretty yeah what, what did it feel like did it actually sink in when someone was like oh you've qualified for the Olympics yeah, because I think I, I don't know, like it seemed so confusing, the whole mm. selection process. Like, I don't even know if you've actually qualified for the Olympics. <laughs> I don't know who has. And I'm, you know, it seems like it's still all up in the air. And I was trying to crunch the numbers. I was like, what does Billy have to do to make the Olympics? And and then I think I did some Instagrammy thing. And then the ISA Instagrammy mm. person was like, no, he's basically qualified. And I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. Um, yeah, because I, I mean, I... Yeah, I don't know. It was fucking confusing, man, is all I can say. <laughs> it, was, it was super it was. confusing. Uh, yeah, I had to... I didn't really want to talk about it or even think about it. I just wanted to do my best in the whole contest, you know. I just wanted to head down, make as many heats as I could and um, do my like my own personal goals. And I definitely achieved, um, achieved that. So, yeah, getting eighth in the contest and then um, helping the team to get seventh overall, I think, which is like one of the best we've ever done. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Like, it was a crazy week. And it hasn't, like, still settled in. Like, everyone keeps saying, like, congrats and, um, yeah, well done. But it's just, like, yeah, it's pretty surreal. It's a pretty well, crazy feeling. I mean, it's a fucking massive accomplishment. Yeah. And because this is the first time they've ever had the Olympics in surfing. So you could say, like, a few years ago, if someone said, oh, you know, you're going to be an Olympian, you'd be like, what the fuck? How am I going to look? And what sport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And yeah. then, like, I mean, I could see you as like a jockey or something because you're quite short. <laughs> oh, you know, you could take bro. over Mark Todd oh, yeah, thanks, as man. no, no, no. This is this is a compliment, oh, like as a horse rider or something yeah. like that. Okay. Um, but like, you know, because surfing wasn't on the cards. Yeah, well, yeah. But Until, then, and what, then two and, years ago, three years ago. Yeah, probably three years ago. Yeah. I think they made that call. They're like, surfing's going to be in the 2020 Olympics. Mm. And uh, I mean, since you heard that three years ago, whatever it was, was that instantly was that a goal of yours to qualify? Yeah, 100 Hundred percent cliche there. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. But it was. Oh wait, wait, wait. One hundred and ten percent. One hundred and ten, bro. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Um, it was for sure. I mean, as soon as surfing, like, it, I think it's just huge for surfing in general. It's going to bring a lot more, like, broader people to follow and watch surfing. And um, there's so many eyes on the whole Olympics, and I, I feel like Olympics is like the epitome of athletes, kind of. You know, it's the pinnacle of, yeah. of sport. So. It's it's pretty crazy to think that surfing is amongst that because it's you know you kind of think surfers are like pretty cruisy and I don't know pot you, smokers eh <laughs> yeah know, like, love the weeds pretty laid back and, yeah. and and but but now I guess yeah a lot of, a lot has changed to the last few years and um, the ISA have done a good job to get the surfing in, into the Olympics and um, yeah as soon as I heard it was going to be there it was it was the top of my list obviously with, alongside with making the WSL um, World Tour. And yeah, I mean, this year's been really good for me, competitively and mentally and physically. And yeah, everything's going pretty well. Yeah, you seem to have definitely raised your, your level of performance and kind of like your whole, like your brain shit, mm. you know, your brain stuff, the yeah. stuff that's going on up there. Brain stuff. Well, not physically, but, but mentally. Yeah. Like, you know, you're in a good space. And and I can you know definitely see the results coming from that, mm. and um, I don't know it's it's really good to see because like I've told you before like I kind of live somewhat vicariously through you because I'm kind of getting old and now you know I've got you you know achieving yeah. some success I'm just like yeah Billy do it for you but also do it for me as well you know and <laughs> I, I mean I've told you this before but I'm just reiterating that. Yep. Is yeah. that? And I know there's a lot of people that, that you're doing it for. Mm. Um, your dog as well. Yeah, little man. Yeah. He's like my best mate. He is your best yeah, mate. He's the boy. Yeah, no, like, yeah, like I said, I've changed a lot. I've sacrificed kind of a few things this year as well. Like, um, I've kind of just segregated from a lot of people and stayed to my Oh, own. shunned mates. Kind of just like stayed to myself. No, I know you're drinking less and that's good. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, I guess not not going out like every weekend and, and I guess, yeah, drinking um, and just doing my own program, kind of just doing what I want to do and, and what makes me feel good and ma makes me happy. And obviously I learned a lot um, after the last few 
few years like losing my main sponsor and mom and everything like that kind of hit, hit home and then I had to like get a proper job and st pretty much start from scratch and it, I think it, it helped me grow a little bit and realize how good I had it and um, how, how good I guess I am personally at, at, at what I do so so you're um, able to put things into perspective yeah, and so yeah I kinda look just, back at your successes mm, and see where you can kind of take yeah, it yeah and it and the last years kind of just all come together like I, I picked up a new board sponsor which has helped out a lot and um, a few other like sponsors have come on board to help out and it's just a good little confidence booster as well but personally yeah I've, I've changed a lot with my mental stuff and um, physically and yeah just a lot of things have changed for the better yeah mm. and your hair is still there <laughs> yeah just I'm I mean here. not to bring it down but <laughs> fucking hell look at that little flicky oh bro what, it sucks right being now? bald and hanging out with you <laughs> Fucking, oh, yeah, it really dope. brings me down. You know, you've got so much going for you. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> stop it. No, you're but, doing well, bro. Come on. Oh, you know, I'm trying. Movies I'm trying. and podcasts well, and videos and all sorts. Well, I've been trying to do the, the whole one and a half men series. Yeah. And uh, that's been difficult, though. What do you Main, mean? Well, because I've been hanging out by myself. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, well, now we're together. Let's make one. Yeah, well, what happens with that from now on? Hey, where can you see one and a half men going? I'm asking you the question, even though it's kind of like both of our little fucking... I see it. Our, our child. Kind of going off. We should well, keep, that, keep it going. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. And uh, it's been... I've had a lot of fun doing that with Me you. Me too. I, like, I mean, I've been going all these places, like, last few weeks even. People were just like, when's the new one and a half men coming up? And you have to tell them that you have no fucking idea. Yeah, I'm like, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. It's hard when I'm away all the time. Well, yeah. But you've got that backup doll, remember? Remember the what? The backup doll. <laughs> That's right. Episode four, I think it was, was when you first went away to some contest, mm. and I was like, oh well, substitute. Shit. Yeah. yeah, I left to substitute Billy for for someone else. Yeah. But um, no, I'd really like to kind of push that, and I think a lot of people have enjoyed that, which is awesome. Yeah. I mean, we could probably document you in the lead up to the Olympics. Yeah. Could be a good thing. Yeah. You know, your, your training, my, mm -hmm. well, I guess me living vicariously through you yeah, and your yeah. successes. Shredding, traveling. Yeah. Do it all. Yeah. Summer's coming up. I'm sure there'll be a few episodes coming out. Oh, it'd have to be. Yeah. But, uh, oh, what was I going to ask you? The bloody, the comp in Piha. Oh, yes, oh, yes. I mean, what do you think Challenger about that? Challenger series. Yeah, the yeah, Challenger series. That's a... It. That's a big bloody step, the eh? Challenger series, I know. It because I, I think that's going to open things up for surfing in New Zealand um, tremendously. It's going to be yeah, huge for surfing in New Zealand, I think. like Especially for the guys competing on the QS already, I think it's going to be a huge start for us. Um, it's going to be like a little bit, like an extra step, I guess, because it's the first big contest of the year. You're at home, you're a bit more comfortable, you know the waves. Um, and it'd just be a good, huge confidence booster, I think, for the start of the QS. And it's a ten or a Challenger Series, which is a 10,000. So it's a good opportunity to get some points. And, um, yeah, I guess th there's a Trials, I think. There, There is a Trials. I've seen you, uh, you were pretty keen to get into the comp. Oh, I'm, v I'm very keen to get yeah. into the comp. I've never done a WQS contest before, mm. and I figure that, you know, that would probably be an ideal one for mm. me to dip my toes into, you know? Yeah, and definitely. Yeah, but the, the trials, I'm not even sure if I get into the trials. Why not? Uh, it looked fucking rigged. Well, not very good, but it looked rigged against me. Oh, yeah. I was like, uh, New Zealand Surfing just don't want me to get in there. So Because I looked at, there was a massive list of mm -hmm. the requirements to get into the trials. Mm -hmm. I and, saw and, what, 12 spots or something? Yeah, 12 or 16. 16? I didn't fit into any of the categories. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, because usually they give, like, WSL give two wild cards away. I think. Well, so you don't need one because you're in the top 100. Yeah, well, hopefully, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. No, you will be. Yeah. And then, I guess, uh, whoever's the highest rated QS guy out of the top 100 will probably get a spot. There's two rounds, but usually they have a local wildcard and a WSL wildcard in both rounds. Okay. So that's four. Four. Four mm. wild cards. But but there's a trials, so they'll have one one of them will be a trials wild card, I guess. Well it said two from the trials. Oh yeah? Yeah. So they have two from the trials and then I guess two WSL 
World Cup. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm pretty confident if I do make it into the trials that I can qualify for the main event. Yeah, for sure. And do, you get, do you get money? Would I get money if yeah. I even make I would? Yeah. Fuck yeah. I think first round, yeah. Okay. I'll, well, I mean, not that I'm going to lose in the first round no. if I make it. Like, oh, there's a good chance that I could win the entire yeah. event. But you've got to like pay for insurance and. Oh fuck that! Nah, I'm done. How much? <laughs> wait, how much is insurance? <laughs> uh, I have to pay for all that shit, yeah. even if I'm a wild card. One off, yeah. You're kidding me. Yeah. Ah, uh, what? How it's much is cheap. it? hundred bucks. Something like that. Yeah, US. And can I get someone else to pay for that? Um. Yeah. If you ask someone else to pay for it. Oh, I guess I could do that probably. Yeah. Uh, if anyone else is listening. <laughs> out there who wants to pay for me to get into that comp. Oh, fuck, I have to win the trials first, though, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, is there any way I can just pay a, a sum of money to someone to get myself in there? Probably not. There's not? There's no... Don't know. Is there no, like, fucking underhanded, bloody shady deals? Is, don't think so. Not really? I, not even fellatio no, or anything? I don't know. No money? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't fuck. So. Oh. You could try, but... Yeah, I could it try. Might, might could backfire. In, yeah, might backfire. Like yeah, but I mean, what kind of trouble can I get in? Because I don't even I don't even compete on the WSL anyway. Yeah. True. So if I was just like, here's fifty bucks, you know, just kind of did a handshake deal with who would I have to who would I have to see about that? Don't know. Don't know. Surf New Zealand WSL. I don't know. Uh, I don't think Surf New Zealand could do shit. I could ask because they might know who to mm. you know do mm. the. They're probably not going to promote that. No, nah, probably not. But yeah, I'm. I mean, regardless, I'm looking forward to that event. Yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be it'll be crazy because it's a men's and women's, so it'll bring a lot of the top surfers in the world to New Zealand for the first like I think it's before Snapper CT, which will be awesome. Um, and it's the big. It's the first big one of the year, so everyone wants to start off pretty strong. So everyone will be coming for sure. Cool. Do you reckon yeah. Kelly Slater will come? Don't know. There's talk of. There's already talk of him coming, but I think that's just a bit of a media hype. Oh. But maybe. Yeah, well, hopefully he'll come. He doesn't do QSs, does he? But in saying that, like, I think a lot of people will come because it's just before um, Snapper. Yeah. So. And and it's Piha. I mean, why would why would someone not want to go to Piha? Can you think of any reason why no, you know, anyone would just be like, oh, nah, I don't want to go to Piha for a contest. Um. None really eh, at all. No. No. I mean, Ragman's probably better, but. I don't know, bro. Raglan's pretty overrated. I wouldn't come here. <laughs> Neither. Nah. Nah. And um, so off to Hawaii soon. Mm-hmm. And uh, off to Hawaii in a month for the la- for the trip crown, which I'm super excited about. I haven't been back in um, two, two, three years pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I usually do pretty well there con- considering I'm pretty small and, you know. How how do you deal with the the large um, millipedes and centipedes that they have over there? I don't know. Have you ever seen one? No. Oh, because that's part of like why I've never wanted to go to Hawaii. What? Because of the centipedes? Yeah. What have you seen waves? those? Met- Fuck. Well, I'm, no, I'm probably not going to go surfing realistically. <laughs> how much is a piss over there? You're it's pretty coming cheap. over, eh? maybe. Well, no, I don't know. I'd like to. But uh, no, I've always been intimidated by the millipedes and the centipedes over there. Like they can get it as long as your arm. Well, I mean, half your arm up to your elbow. Uh, yeah. So, what, like four of my arms here? Yeah, three of your <laughs> arms. Yeah. No, I don't know. It I'm just like, seems like quite an intimidating place. There's is, a lot. There's quite, a lot going on there. There's yeah. a lot of big things. There's a lot of scary things. Yeah. Obviously, waves, millipedes, some locals that might. Yeah. You know, not agree yeah, that, with you being there. That that, uh, that time he is. Definitely on the like he- bit more hectic side because everyone's like quali- fighting for qualification, fighting for sponsorship. Um, there's a, there's the whole surf industry is there, photos, filming, um, you know, it's just, and the the pipe contest, the triple crown. Um, everyone's there to try and prove themselves, even if they're young, they want to prove themselves for the, at the start or they're you know getting older and they want to just keep going. And uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoy it. I think New Zealand and Hawaii have a like a pretty good connection and every time I go over there I think I kind of get along with all the Hawaiians so it's a bit more comforting and um, comfortable but uh, I think I'm traveling with uh, Wade Carmichael and Cooper Chapman in a house over there which will be fun um, yeah I'm really looking forward to it I've got some big boards over there already and you've got boards over there yeah well I ordered some boards oh from of, Sharp Eye so Sharp Eye is sending them there or something yeah well I, no I had 
I had some boards from a few years ago that I just left over there. You left them there? Yeah. Under someone's house? <laughs> Actually, Glen, Glen Pang. Under his house? At, in his factory, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, if they're under the house, those fucking millipedes. <laughs> no, they're in his factory. Oh, okay, good. Um, yeah, so I've got like eight or ten boards over there already. Um, Sharp Eye are sh- uh, shaping me some more, so yeah, I'm going to be pretty prepared. I'm going like a week early before the contest. Uh, yeah, and just hopefully get into the swing of things and just surf every day and surf some big boards and get some practice and hopefully charge a few big ones. Yeah, fucking A. Mm, hopefully and then, get a few results. and Yeah, wild card into the Pipe Masters, yeah, that'd be sick. Triple crown and maybe the world tour and who knows what can happen. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I guess that's the goal is to, mm. uh, you've qualified for the Olympics mm-hmm. already, which was one of your main goals. Yep. And the other one, obviously, is make the world tour. Yeah. So I guess you've got a couple of cracks left mm-hmm. at that. Yeah. Big result and then... See big results and then, yeah, see what happens from there. I'm pretty... Yeah, I'm looking forward to why. I can't oh, wait. Well. I'm, I'm looking forward to see you. And, mm. and you might be lucky enough uh, for me to come over there and hang out with you and make some episodes of One and a Half Men. Yeah, well, that could be the go, yeah. hopefully. All right. Well, uh, good luck. Thank you. And um, let's go for a surf. Yeah, let's get out there, eh? Cheers, bro. Thanks for having me. Cheers.